consuming REST APIs can be very fast without systems. But what happens when you are the one implementing that API for others to consume? Join me in this episode of Decoded Quick Hits, where I'll guide you through the journey of exposing a REST API without systems. Exposing your data to the world can be a very important milestone for your team, but it comes with a few challenges. You want to make sure that you have the correct foundations so you can then focus on the API design. Questions like, what resources do I want to expose? What HTTP codes do I want to use? What kind of authentication do I want to use? Those are some of the questions that I'll try to answer in this video. So let's get down to it. And for the sake of time, I've already done some research. I already know what I want to implement and expose. So I went ahead and did some groundwork for the sake of time. So let's review that. First, our resources. So we want to expose one object that is the product with some fields and another object that is the category of that product. So these are two are the two resources or objects that we want to expose. Then we went ahead and created a structure for any errors that might occur. I like to include the status code here, but this can be handled uh, any other way. So that's done. Those are the resources. And I also went ahead and implemented some methods. So how do we go about? We just right click on the rest, choose expose rest API, and this is created. And I call it V1 since I wanted to show how we can version an API. And as you can see, this would be the URL for the endpoint. So we would have the versioning right before the methods. You can do it any other way. There are a lot of ways you can do versioning. You can have it uh, as a URL parameter or in the other. Choose your best preferences. It's okay. This is how I like to do it. And I've already went ahead and developed some methods. So if we go here, we have a method to list products that is an HTTP method get and the path is just products. If we go to get just a specific product, a get method with the same name for the resource and it's in plural and the input parameter here, which is the ID that we want our end users to give us so we can then uh, respond with that specific product. So if you want to enable our end users to create a product, there's the post method and once again, the same URL path for the same resource. And if you want to update, let our end users update a product, put and products. That's how it's done so far. There are also other methods like the delete method, uh, but we don't want our end users to delete products or any other resource that we have. Important note here, when I say end users, I'm talking about developers that are consuming my API. So it's important that we have in mind that our end users are developers as us that are also implementing and consuming APIs. So one thing that I want to do here is that I'm liking a method to get a category and that's how I expose a method. So if I want to do some logic here, I could just go to our database filter by category ID. I don't need to sort because this will hopefully only return one record. And for the response, I want this be a structured record of category and the error structure when it comes to that. Assign, what I want to do is select this, say that it belongs to this and map it. So this is a very simple way of 
exposing a get method with an input parameter. And so if, for example, I wanted to have some sort of listing and searching in the list, I could go, well, I need an input parameter called search keyword. And in the URL path, I could go product search, search keyword, or do another method just for the search and filtering of products instead of using the list for this. So this is one example. Let me go back as I don't want this to be a thing. I just want people to list my products. So next question is what type of authentication do I want to use for my API? And in order to do this, I could go wild and say that anyone can access the API without any further authentication, just having the endpoint should suffice. I can use the basic authentication or the custom one. For this one, I'll choose basic. And I have this method created that already uses the user login action, which means that in order for us to use this API, we would have to register somewhere so we could be registered in our user's application so that when this runs, we have a valid registration there. So I could do this and it's fine, or I can add some more, well, I would say security, but it's not security per se, which is I already have a role here that is called API user and I can go. So let me check if the person has the API user role, which means that it's not only registering, but also having some permission so you can use this API. So I can check the role and if something goes wrong, I can throw an error, for example. And in order to do this, it comes the question of what HTTP codes we want to use. So looking at the standards, if we um, look at the HTTP codes available for us, we have the 401 and the 403. So the 401 should be if I don't even have a valid authentication um, for the credentials that, I, that I'm using when consuming the API. And the 403 is a forbidden, which means that I might have a valid authentication, but I don't have the right permissions to access the resources that I'm trying to get. And so for that, I could use a server action and this specific one that sets the HTTP code. And I would say that is a 403 and I will raise an, ex an exception that I also built before and set a message that could be something like you don't have permissions to access this API. And what this would do is that it will send a, a response with the HTTP code 403 and with the message you don't have permissions to access this. API. We could use our error structure and our JSON serialize and send that. So we have a more detailed message and send that in the exception message as well. And with this, we were able to build an API that exposes to resources and with a few HTTP methods, with some standardization in URL paths, with versioning and with authentication, and also with some um, HTTP codes um, in the mix. Also important to note that OutSystems helps you with this status code, so it can automatically send send some of them for you by default and you don't have to do this for every step of the API. And that's how we quickly can expose our data and our product to our end users, our developers that will be consuming our API. Hope that helps. It was a very quick overview over this. You can build so much more complex use cases here and I'll make sure to leave some links that can help you in that journey as well. So that's it for today. Hope that helps. See you in the next one.